In the United Kingdom, the nation's primary beach safety organization, the Royal National Lifeboat Institution, along with scientists from University of Plymouth's Coastal Processes Research Group, are dealing with their own hazardous beach that has a unique rip current problem. The United Kingdom has beaches patrolled by lifeguards from the Royal National Lifeboat Institution, or RNLI. And rip currents are a major safety issue on most of these beaches. Our number one hazard in the ocean around the UK coastline, particularly down here in the southwest of England, are rip currents. So of those 3,000 incidents that the lifeguards attended to last year, that they responded to rescue people from the sea, more than 1,500 of those, so more than half, were people being caught in rip currents. It's July 2022 at Crantock Beach in Cornwall, and the RNLI, University of Plymouth, and a wider group of local landowners, businesses, and community groups have just unveiled the UK's first digital beach hazard warning sign that provides the public with daily forecasts on beach conditions, including rip current hazards. It's an innovative response to a sharp rise in rip current incidents on Crantock Beach, an ongoing problem made worse by nature's fury. Crantock is a small beach facing the Atlantic Ocean on the north coast of Cornwall. It's patrolled by RNLI lifeguards during the summer and is popular with beachgoers, particularly families who enjoy swimming in the River Dannel estuary that's directly connected to the beach. Normally a safe swimming location for the public until everything changed. Back in 2014, we had some real wild winter storms here. One of those storms in February of 2014 took out the rock armor, which used to hold the River Gannel back against the Pentire headland. As soon as that rock armor was displaced, that changed the course of the River Gannel. And the river, which was predictable and used to flow alongside the headland, suddenly turned course and started to head across the middle of the beach. That brings problems and, and brought problems immediately for us the following summer. The change in the river flow started creating havoc with beachgoers. Unsuspecting swimmers were finding themselves caught in the estuarine currents flowing out of the river and then quickly being transported across the beach directly into the pathway of rip currents. There was an immediate increase in rescues rising from less than 40 per year before the storms in 2014 to over 190 per year in 2018. Sadly, there was also two fatalities, which occurred outside of lifeguard hours. With a growing public safety problem on their hands, the RNLI reached out to scientists from University of Plymouth. We wanted to go out and directly measure the, the flows that were happening on the beach. We wanted to measure how big the waves were, how far in and out the tide was going, and how strong the currents were at different places on the beach. We measure the dry parts of the beach using a drone, and that gives us a really detailed picture of the shape of the beach. The second type of data we collected were measurements of the flows, and we collected those using uh, instruments fixed in position, these are what we call Eulerian measurements. So they're a single point in space where we're measuring water flowing past and we're measuring how fast that water's flowing and in what direction it's flowing. The third type of data that we collected were uh, what we call Lagrangian measurements. So these are measurements of the flows where the measurements are moving with the flow. And with those three different types of data, you build up a picture of where the currents are, how fast they're flowing, and how those currents and waves change as the change in tide and change in wave conditions alter them. We get really big tides here in Cornwall. Um, the spring tide range would be about six meters between low tide and high tide vertically. Um, in terms of how far in and out the tide comes, that results in about you know, one kilometer difference uh, horizontally between low tide and high tide. 
We know from previous research that waves and tides are really the key factors that switch on and off rip currents. If you get the right combination of waves and tides, rips will start up and as soon as the tide changes beyond a certain point, those rips will just disappear. After analysing all of our data, the main thing we learned is really that we have a combination of rip currents and estuary currents at this beach and they don't work in isolation. The two things combine and they create quite a unique pattern of currents um, and the, the, the sum total of all this is actually a higher level of hazard than you would tend to get at an average beach with rip currents. Once we collected all this data, we had all the information we needed to set up a really detailed computer model. So effectively what we've created is a, a digital twin of the beach. Um, it's, a, it's a way that we can simulate what the beach will be doing under different wave and tide conditions. The model basically predicts how fast the currents will flow, it predicts where the waves will break, um, with what intensity they will break, and all of this gives us a picture of where the currents are going. This dynamic daily forecasting information with Smart Beach technology is presented to the public by a large digital sign. So we're now, we've invested in new signage. We've got digital signs in the car park as you enter the beach at Cram Talk, which now gets that message to the public. Because our lifeguards finish at six o'clock in the evening, when it's really important, is not when the lifeguards are there to keep an eye on people and have the, the flags out and are talking to everybody, it's when the lifeguards aren't there. It's when people need to understand for themselves what the risk is and whether they can venture into the sea and whether it's in their, within their ability. So we're able to give that detail with our messaging and, and with that information to the public and we hope ultimately one day this will save lives.